Okay, let's talk a little bit about technology, uh, allergies, a little bit of HIV, stuff that is specific to the immune system. So we can, uh, we can do a lot of things to help control pathogens. Antiseptics, this is like Listerine, antibiotic soap. These have chemicals within them that will prevent cells from multiplying. So it kills bacteria specifically. Alcohol does a pretty good job of uh, disinfecting. But there are other things and other chemicals that can actually go within the cells and kill them. And we call these chemicals that do this antiseptics. Uh, Listerine is an antiseptic because it actually has the ability to kill specific pathogens that grow inside of your mouth, on your tongue, and your gums. Antibiotics, same concept. It is going to kill bacteria. Antibio, anti-life. But this is medicine that you would take orally or through an injection that goes throughout your entire blood and kills bacteria anywhere that's gotten in your body. Okay, It can target specific bacteria. So we can design specific types of antibiotics so that it kills the types of bacteria that we have. But bacteria can evolve and it can become resistant to those antibiotics by no longer being affected by them. One example of antibiotics is penicillin. Okay, penicillin, let's say this is a bacteria cell right here. This is bacteria. Penicillin prevents the bacteria from building a cell wall. Like plants, bacteria have cell walls. So if this chemical gets in here into the cell and prevents it from producing a cell wall, it can't multiply and make new bacteria. Streptomycin, another type of antibiotic. It gets so streptomycin will get into the bacteria and prevent it from making proteins. It blocks protein synthesis. If a bacteria cell can't make proteins, it's going to die. So that's one way. So there's different categories of antibiotics. Vaccines. Oops. Vaccine is something that contains the actual antigen of the pathogen. So let's say I have. Uh, a virus. I'm going to actually take the part of the virus that my white blood cells can recognize. I'm going to take like a weakened form of the virus, put that in here. So I actually take the antigen, the thing on the virus, the thing on the surface of the cell that triggers the immune response. But I just want that. I don't want the whole thing because I don't want to get sick. Put it inside of a needle and stick it in my body so that my body can start to produce antibodies right away without actually getting infected. You're producing the antibodies that attack an, uh, the pathogen without getting sick from the pathogen itself. When you're allergic, this is harmless antigens. So these are chemicals that, an antigen is a chemical that triggers an immune response that can be found in pollen, pet, uh, you know, like cat hair. Certain foods and medicines, people allergic to tobacco smoke, mold, right, dust mites, anything that will cause a over response. So if you're if you, an allergy is just oversensitivity to what most of us don't respond to. Here's what happens with allergies. So this is pollen right here, right. This is going to be your your antigen. It's going to have things on the surface of its cells that bond to our immune system. This is called a oops, sorry. This is called a mast cell. Mast cell. Okay. It produces these chemicals when the antigen that you're allergic to bonds to surface protein receptors right here. This chemical is called histamine. Everybody heard of that before? Histamine. Histamine, these chemicals, when these chemicals release, right, these chemicals release, it causes inflammation. Remember when all the white blood cells go and they rush towards those chemicals and that causes swelling, that causes redness and pain. That's when you're allergic is when these antigens trigger these cells to produce histamine. So what's Benadryl? You guys heard of Benadryl, right? It's an antihistamine. Benadryl will block this from happening so that you don't produce any histamines. Does that make sense? So you can eat or consume the things that you're allergic to 
and it won't release those chemicals causing a response. So let's say you're allergic to pollen. Here's pollen. Pollen gets in here, bonds to the surface of the nasal cavity, makes its way into the capillaries that line the nasal cavity, right? And then once they do that, your white blood cells, right, are going to bond to that surface, right? Your mast cells, it's going to bond to that. And then it's going to produce a bunch of histamines, right? It's going to start to produce, you know, all these different types of histamines in your blood. And that's going to cause an, imu an immune response. So the way an allergy works, and some of you guys are allergic, is you must be exposed to that allergen, whatever it is. You're, Mr. Van Name is extremely allergic to macadamia nuts. If you were to consume macadamia nuts, right, he has um, B cells that produce antibodies, right, that trigger your mast cells to produce histamine, causing, uh, and that's produced inside of your nose and skin cells that triggers the allergic reaction. Uh, this is for like smelling flowers. For Mr. Van Aim, it wouldn't be nose and skin cells, right? Because you'd be digesting that through, um, through the digestive system. An autoimmune disease, auto meaning self, is when your white blood cells attack itself. It gets confused. It thinks that your body's cells are foreign pathogens. So my grandpa has what's called rheumatoid arthritis is when your own body's white blood cells start to attack the joints, and the cells and the cartilage inside, and it causes swelling, okay? Swelling of the joints, that's arthritis. Multiple sclerosis, when your white blood cells start to degrade the myelin sheath, this wrapping around your nerve cells, ca causing um, inflammation and scarring in the nervous system. There's uh, two main diseases that will weaken the, uh, the immune system. Leukemia is characterized by abnormal white blood cells because we have this cancer in the white blood cells that's located in the bone marrow. And so your white blood cells don't develop properly. And if you don't have white blood cells developing properly, you're going to have a lowered immune system. This is ultimately like blood cancer. HIV is a virus that causes AIDS. Uh, it's a retrovirus. It's called a retrovirus because it has RNA inside, not DNA. So what happens is it has to go from RNA to DNA to messenger RNA. It's got to go backwards, right? That's why it's called a retrovirus. And so inside of this envelope, inside is the virus. It's wrapped with this envelope on the outside with these little surface proteins that make our white blood cells think that it's just another white blood cell. And so if this is a T cell, okay, a helper T cell, the virus like a Trojan horse gets inside by masking itself like another T cell. And so we kill our T cells. So we should have a lot of T cells and they drop in number. So we have very few T cells. So this would be like a healthy person with lots of T cells. And then this would be like someone that ends up having AIDS because they don't have as many T cells. And so they're very prone to infections. The way that you get HIV is through trans, uh, exchanging blood or other bodily fluids. You can't get HIV if somebody sneezes on you or coughs on you or kisses you. So HIV, like I said, reproduces in T cells. T cells are very important for the immune response. So if HIV kills T cells and we lower the number of T cells, our immune system gets weak and eventually we have AIDS. Okay, when our T cells get so low that we can't uh, uh, like fight a normal infection, you get an acquired immuno or immune deficiency syndrome. This syndrome is acquired, how is it acquired? Through HIV, through the virus. Your helper T cells are important. Helper T cells, when they come into contact with something, they activate our other cells to then produce like antibodies that are going to attack it. If you kill the T cells, you can't produce antibodies to help attack uh, and, um, 